Now another massive game coming up for the Kangaroos uh, as they take on the Cats, and that's Brent Harvey. Robbo, next to you. Well, there. I was just checking. Did you name. move my <laughs> run down three pages? Nah, not quite, mate. Not there quite. it is. Here. Welcome, Burma. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Thanks for coming in, mate. Are you getting sick of having to talk about this? That's facing this scenario of down one week and, and up the next. Yeah, we are a little bit, but I think we put ourselves in that uh, predicament, unfortunately. Um, I think when we play the good teams, we just go out there and, and play, and like the shackles are off, go out and bring the ball through the middle or etc. or do, it, do whatever you want. When we play the, um, the teams that are a little bit lower on the ladder, I think we go into our shell a little bit and a little bit scared to make mistakes. Scared to make mistakes or are you going with a big head? No, I don't think we're going in with a big head. Um, our preparation is exactly the same every week. The coaches, Brad, uh, Darren Crocker, Lee But it's Trudeau. mentally, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it I, mental, Boomer? Yeah, I understand that, but I, 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 no, I don't think we do. I don't think we're going with a big head. I just think we play complacent football. And today, the, the competition is that even that you, you, know, you can't have lapses in concentration, whether it's for 25 minutes or it's for a full for, game. There's been a lot of discussion, of, you know, and, and Brad has said it, and players have said it, and, and you know... Well done to the Kangaroos players for facing up to the media after you lost. Del Santo was, yep. was one, you know, he was on SGN, he said, you know, we're confused. The way you answered then, it seems to me that, right, you've all sat down and said, right, what is all feeling? And someone has said complacent, and maybe you, and I think the group, has the group addressed that and said, you know what, that may be, that may be the issue. Is that, is that what's happening? No, I don't think, well, we haven't exactly, oh, of course we sit down every single Monday and dissect the whole game, whether we win or we lose. Um, we haven't sat down and said that we are playing complacent football. It's just that when we look at our edits on a Monday and some of the things we do, we go away from our game plan. We go away from the way we want to play and Brad knows it's on us. Because we, are, we have shown this year that we are very, very good, but we all also have shown that we're very poor. So we've just got to, we've got to even that gap up. And once we do that, we can be a consistently good team. It's like the Hawthorns, like the, you know, these type of teams. Com complacent equal laziness? I think sometimes it could. Yes, and probably a few players take a few liberties. And again, we see them on the Monday yep. and the boys, Brad looks them in the eye and the rest of the group and they, they get shown out. And we're trying to iron that out at the minute. I'm interested, does it affect the senior and the younger players in a different way, these up and down results? I think Brad speaks to the, obviously the leadership group and the older players a little bit more than he would with the, the younger players, um, purely to, to get the leaders to show the way in that, in that aspect. And, um, I've been hit up, Del Sano, Swallow, Petrie. We've all been hit up this year because we're the leaders of the football club and we have to show these young guys consistently this is the way to do it. And has Brad, uh, Brad's actions have been a, in a bit of the news along the way about how he's handled it. Has anything changed in the last couple of weeks? No, I wouldn't say the last couple of weeks. Um, I think he's now got a great understanding of what we're capable of. So yeah. that probably happened earlier on in the season when we beat the, the top four teams. And now he's not letting us get away with the things we probably used to get away with. He's demanding more of us, isn't he? He is, he is. But, um, but that hasn't been the last two or three weeks. That's been a, you know, probably the start of the season thing. And pr certainly pre-season. We went over to Utah and we, we trained really hard on defensive stuff. We trained really hard on our fitness. And now he's demanding what we're capable of. Uh, it's funny, no, no matter where or who North Melbourne plays, you look at them and say, at their best, they can win. Yep. You're playing Geelong. And I reckon I've picked Geelong for the last 10 times. Yep. And I reckon I've seen the Kangaroos beat Geelong. And I think to myself, God, I've picked the wrong week once again yep. to pick, about, pick against North Melbourne. Do you feel a level of confidence against Geelong? I know you're going to say yes, but they, this is a great team. Yep. But you go in confident North Melbourne, don't you? Every single week, Robbo, against... Any team. Who's in bottom of the ladder at the minute? I'm not too yeah. sure. Um, whether you played St Kilda... Melbourne, GWS, well, they're or, pretty well at or it's uh, one of the top teams. We beat Sydney, we beat Hawthorne. I can speak on behalf of myself, and I'd like to be saying that I'm speaking on behalf of my 21 teammates that I run out with every single week that we are confident that we can knock off that team. You've got something that disturbs Geelong, though, haven't you? What is it? I don't know. You know. I'm just, <laughs> you're, you're, well, I can't say it right here, can I? His brother's yeah, probably sitting there watching. <laughs> yeah, he probably is. But, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I'm a level of confidence in me. I've seen you guys... Dismantled Geelong. Yeah, I think last year, I think it was round one or two at Etihad Stadium. We got out to a 30-odd point head start and they, and the they got us. Came. Yeah, the rain came and 
the roof was open. <laughs> oh, that, that, that day when Brent went yeah, nuts. And they knocked us off by a couple of points, I think. Uh, Bartel might have kicked yeah. a late goal. And then um, this year they got us at Simmons Stadium, no doubt about that. They just Tough played a lot, lot better football. But last year we got them at Eddie Hat as well. So I think we, you know, we obviously enjoy Eddie Hat Stadium. 380 games, Boomer. You, you're getting closer towards 400. And you've obviously signed on again for another year. But yep. your numbers this year are incredible. You, you're just still churning them out. Obviously, here's the, here's the table of... You're edging closer to, to Harvey. You're sick of looking at that too. That comes Fletcher. up every time someone speaks. Yeah, when I get an interview, it's uh, whether it's a graph like that or on, a, on the radio, they they bring it up. But I, mean, I bring up part of the parcel. You you got to get used to it. It's you know people Sorry, are going to talk about it. No, no, no. That's, I, I bring that's up good, the I fact that you you can run and move. You, you, how old are you? 35. Yeah, we'll take 35. You, so this is how old you get, and you, you're actually going lower. <laughs> I've been doing that for about six years. You've mate. seen all your great teammates, Steve O, Art, Simo. I'll go through them. Every single one you've played with, you see it, Kingy, Kingy, really early. Yep. They get old, <laughs> don't they? And you look at them and you think, I don't want to say anything, but they're not the player they used to be. The next minute, they're injured, and then yep. it's a struggle. You haven't gone through that. Well, it seems to me that you haven't gone through that. Well, that's that. good from a football observer. It's yeah. good to hear but that. But do you feel that? No, no, I feel great. I mean, it's funny because Drew Petrie asks me every day, um, how many anti-inflammatories you take? How many, you know, how many hours sleep you get? So maybe Drew is starting to get to that <laughs> and starting to <laughs> suss it out a little bit. But I, I actually feel really good. I still enjoy going training. Um, I love going to the gym with the boys. I love getting out on the on the training track. And um, you know, there's well, we've got a young guy this year, Kane Kane Turner. He's 18 years old. This is my 19th no, no. year football. So I've been playing from before, and I know Dustin Fletcher goes through the same thing. But do it's, they allow it's quite you amusing. put your music on? They don't. No, they won't listen. My, my music actually, actually got lyrics. The music on stage, you know, there's no, uh, there's no words in it. It's all uh, oomph, oomph. So uh, my music doesn't get a run, unfortunately. <laughs> well, Boomer, uh, we thank you for coming in. Your footy club off the field's going fantastically. Forty thousand for the first time in yeah. club history. Is it really forty? So well done. There to be congratulated. As Robo said, the communication that you guys do with your members through the media is to be applauded. So we thank you very much for that. You've done it again tonight. Good luck on the weekend. Hope you have a close loss <laughs> against the Cats. Thanks, boys.